John chapter 9, and I'm going to read verses 18 through 25. <clears throat> John chapter 9, verse 18 through 25, as you listen along. And uh, let's just let the Lord speak to us today. I want to talk about, I was blind, but now I see. I was blind, but now I see. Verse 18 says, uh, John 9 and verse 18. But the Jews did, did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they had called the parents of him that received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. By what means he seeth, we know not. And who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man uh, that was blind and said unto him, Give God the, the praise. We know that, that uh, this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to teach your word, and I pray you'd speak to our hearts. Father, thank you for the Bible, the, so amazing, the truth. Lord, thank you for everybody who's here today, Lord. I know we have some people out of town, and, and I thank you for every precious soul that's here. Thank you they took time to be faithful to church, and I pray today that they be rewarded by hearing from you, not just the word of God read, but your spirit speaking to their hearts. I confess that I can't do this without you. It takes your spirit, and I pray you'd speak. And we give you all the glory for everybody who's here, for the work of your spirit, for the building that we're in. Everything's from you, Lord. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory, and thank you for it. We love you. You're a good God. You're a wonderful Father. Jesus is an amazing Savior. The Holy Spirit's an incredible teacher and guide, and you're an amazing God. And we don't deserve you, but we thank you that you uh, condescend to men of low estate, and we pray that uh, we would just uh, have our ears open and your spirit would speak in a great way. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Jesus uh, was walking by and there was a man who was blind. <clears throat> and, uh, and, uh, and, and this man, in the end, Jesus heals him. There's some points we're going to bring out and talk to you about things that come out in this. But um, this man uh, ended up being healed and became a big to-do in town with the Pharisees who did not like Jesus and were, were the religious leaders of the day. Had to do with the, uh, uh, with the parents were involved, the crowds, the multitudes, uh, the man himself, and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of things were involved in this situation. But in the end, the man was healed, and then the man was saved and came to Jesus. And it was a great transformation. And uh, he, um, he uh, uh, came away seen. The Pharisees are very angry because of this. First of all, because Jesus healed him on the Sabbath. Jesus uh, uh, poked, kind of kept poking this issue and kept provoking them. He had to teach them uh, that the Sabbath was about him. And uh, you can read the book of Hebrews and, and chapters 3 and 4, and you find out that Jesus... Um, is the rest for our souls that the Sabbath was a picture of, um, that he that uh, has entered into his rest has ceased from his own works. And when Jesus finishes work on the cross, uh, now we can rest our souls in Christ. We don't have to labor for our salvation. We rest for our salvation. If you get to heaven, it's not because you labor, it's because you rest. Resting is trusting Christ, letting him save you. And he did the work. And, 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 but Jesus kept on doing things on the Sabbath, and they didn't know what to, quite to do about it. Um, he, 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 he healed him on the Sabbath. Well, and everybody said, well, he was blind, and he healed him. That guy never walked, and now he's walking. I mean, yeah, the Sabbath day, but, you know, I mean. And Jesus would ask them, is it, is it, is it good to do good or evil on the Sabbath? Hey, you Pharisees, if your ox falls into the well and is dying, I know on the Sabbath you'll pull it out. So why, why shouldn't they heal a blind person on the Sabbath? And he kept proving that you guys don't understand the heart of the law. You don't understand the law is all about me. And, and the law is all about, about things you don't understand. You, you're, 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 you're using it for a weapon. 
and to control people. And that's not what the Bible's for. And, and he kept on showing everybody that, that understand the heart of God, understand what God's really doing. And he healed them on the Sabbath. They did not believe that he was blind before. They tried to find any excuse. They did not want to believe. And understand that when your heart is hard, and we'll get this at the, at the uh, second to last point of the message, when your heart is hard, you will try to explain away the things of God. You will try to find a way. And, and so they tried everything. First of all, they said, look, this guy wasn't really blind. And then they said, maybe it's not him. And, and then they said, well, we well, shouldn't heal him on a Sabbath anyway. Because they just didn't want to give knowledge and acknowledge that Jesus uh, was the Son of God and that he did this thing. They did not believe that this man could have even been blind. Verse 18, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight. Until they called the parents of him that received his sight. Is this your son? Yes. Was he really born blind? Yes. How did that happen? Ask him. They came to him. Uh, how how did you receive your sight? A guy came up and I know in my eyes, uh, he took some mud and some dirt and he, 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 he spit on it and he made it into mud. And he put it over my eyes and he said, go wash in the pool of uh, Siloam and, come and, when you, and you'll be healed. And I did it and I'm healed. Well, how can this man do it? What do you believe about him? He said, I don't know. I, he must be a prophet at least. And they were angry and they tried everything to get, get out of that. And eventually they just came to Jesus and, uh, and, and they did not like the whole situation. They, uh, they tried everything, and they tried to get that. This is an amazing story, and, and I want to give you some things that just from this story, just a little bit of thoughts. Uh, number one, <clears throat> Jesus was busy helping people. <laughs> Jesus was busy helping people. I, just, I taught that our soul winners this yesterday, but verse 1, it says, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man which is blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus said, Neither this man nor his parents. But the works of God should be made manifest. Look at verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus passed by and saw a man blind. He saw a need. And then he says, I must do the works while it's day. There's going to come a time when nobody can work anymore. And that's all of us. And, and understand that time is limited. It's very important to God, redeeming the time because the days are evil. You've got to do God's work and not just pass by. Sometimes they called out to Jesus, but this man didn't call out to Jesus. He just saw the need. And he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. I have to do this. I have to go out and do God's work. I cannot just sit around and do nothing and understand that. You must work the works of God while it is day. There will come a day when you cannot do the works of God. You're going to be dead someday. Someday Jesus will come back. Someday the laws might change. But right now, you can do the works of God. Do not pass by. I think so many people wait for something miraculous before God uses them. I think in our church, in our good church, how many of you could be witnessing that don't witness? How many of you could help somebody? How many of you could feed somebody? In our church, and we have a great church, and, and you, uh, I know you have a heart for that, but, but, but how often do we pass by? How, how, could you be there next Saturday for soul winning? Could you go out this week, and, and the, the, the people you keep looking at your window and saying, what is wrong with them? I'll tell you what's wrong with them. They need Jesus. <laughs> you don't have to ask that question anymore. Now I just go out and talk to them and help them. And don't pass by. And don't pass by. Jesus didn't pass by. It, look, we got a world around us screaming for help. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And a messed up world that knows they don't know the answer, don't just pass by. Jesus said, I've got to do these things. Why, well, Jesus, we're going somewhere. Uh, i, I got to do this. I've got to take care of this person. It's so... It's so easy to let somebody else deal with it. Let the government deal with it. Let the police deal with it. Let this person deal with it. Let their family deal with it. But their family's not dealing with it, and the government doesn't. Do you think the government has the answers? They don't know them. They can't help. They don't know what's going on. They need Jesus. 
See, uh, everybody's need eventually goes back to Jesus. This guy who was blind, he needed Jesus. And, and he got Jesus later. But I don't understand that. Last night I was here, and it was late, and, and probably, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night I'm here, and, and, uh, and I hear somebody screaming outside. And, and this, inner, this neighborhood gets interesting at night. And, uh, and, and somebody's screaming, and, and that's not unusual. And, uh, but I was, I was in my office, and, but the screaming is like somebody's hurt. And, uh, and so uh, I went out and, uh, and just kind of tried to locate it and, and found it was up on the hill back up at the top somewhere there. And, and uh, so uh, I went up there and, and uh, started trying to find the person who was, who was screaming and, and, and see if they were injured and what the problem was. And, and, and there was a guy back in the bushes over there, and, and, uh, <clears throat> and I said, hey, you all right? And, uh, and, and he kind of jumped up and he sat up and looked and he said, I think so. I think so. I'm, I'm, he says, somebody was standing over me and they were, I woke up and they were, they were, it seemed like there was a guy over me and he was just doing this to me and, and, and I'm really freaked out. And I said, there, there's nobody here. It's okay. And, and I've seen the guy and the guy, he's a homeless guy and he has some addictions and, 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 and you know, he's, he has some problems. And I said, I said, you hurt? He says, no. I said, you sure? He said, check, check yourself. You got any injuries? No, no, there's, no, there's no, nothing wrong. I'm okay now. I just, I was really confused. Thank you. I just, I thought, I thought somebody was attacking me. And, and I said, you're okay. So you need anything? No, man, thanks, thanks for coming by. I'm okay now. I just, I was freaked out. Are you sure there's nobody around? No, there's nobody around. I looked all around. You're, you're alone. Okay, thank you so much. You need anything? You sure you're okay? Can you stand up? Let me just see you in the light. Okay. You're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks. You know, and, and maybe you shouldn't do that. I'm equipped to do that. I can do this stuff. I've been dealing with this stuff for a long time, and I was no danger. Trust me. I, I'm, I'm equipped to handle that, and I was fine physically and fine spiritually, and God protects me. And, and maybe you, if you're a teenage girl, don't do that. Okay? I get that. But, but you say, why, why would you do that? Because the Bible says comfort the feeble-minded, and he's messed up. And you know what? I comforted him. And it's, it's really easy to not do anything, and maybe you wouldn't do in that situation. I'm equipped for that situation. Fine. God's equipped me. But God's equipped you for helping people that I couldn't help. And, and it's easy to pass by everybody. And, and you see somebody crying, and you see somebody who's lonely, and you see some kid who's acting out, and maybe just sit down and spend some time with him. You know, Jesus didn't just pass by. I must work the works of him that sent me. And can I just tell you, I don't have time to reach everybody. There's people everywhere. I don't have time to get all the people that come to me. I don't have time to reach all the people that I see. <clears throat> I walk by the people doing drugs in the stairs multiple times this week because I didn't have time. And look, you may not have to do the drug addicts, but maybe your coworker is talking about his marriage falling apart. And maybe you can sit down with them and pray with them. Or you can pass by which is most people do, and, and you've got the answer. <laughs> the answer is Jesus. Sit down and learn a passage and say, God, give me a passage to give to somebody this week. I'm telling you, God will send people along your path if you're available. He has people he loves he wants to reach, but we're his tools. We're his tools. And, and, and far too often, we just pass by. And Jesus said, I must, I must, I must work the work of him that sent me. Look, the other, let's just be honest, the other churches aren't going to do it. There, there are a few good churches in the Puget Sound region. There's a few of them, and I praise God for every one of them, and I've met the pastors, and I, I tell them, thank you for doing the work. There are a few of them. Not enough. Not half enough, not a quarter enough, not a tenth enough. We've got to work overtime. And God put us right here. And God put you in your area. And you say, my area is so messed up. Awesome. It's like somebody, like a janitor saying, this building is dirty. That's what your job is. It's called job security. And you as a Christian being our messed up people, it's called job security. It means God needs to keep you on earth to do something. Because he can just take you to heaven. You can praise him in heaven. But he's got some people for you to reach and help. Amen? Amen? Don't just pass by. Well, that's point number one. I'm already mean. I just started. 
Number two, sometimes bad things happen for a good reason. Sometimes bad things happen for a good reason. Verse two, verse, verse two, the disciples ask him, they see the blind man, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? There's so many things. First of all, hey, disciples, instead of asking theoretical questions, how about you help the guy? <laughs> First of all, hmm, there's a blind guy there. I wonder why he's blind. How about finding a solution instead of looking at the reason of the problem? That is so common to people. Let's study why this man's a drug addict. He's a drug addict. Let's fix him. It doesn't matter if it was a bad friend or a bad family or, or whatever. He's a drug addict. This person's suicidal. Why is he suicidal? Let's fix him. This person's uh, hungry. Well, why, why don't they have food? Let's feed him. And, and, and just find the solution. And then, by the way, teach him to fish so he can feed himself someday. And all those things. But understand, don't sit and get too theoretical. Just, 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 who did sin? This man or his father? Jesus said, neither. Because something bad happened doesn't mean somebody did something wrong. Please get that. That's the devil. The devil tells you, if something went wrong, you must have done something wrong. That just got destroyed in these verses. Who sinned that this man is born blind? Was it his parents or was it him? And Jesus says, neither. Sometimes bad things happen for a good reason. And Jesus says, you know why? Because God knew I was going to walk by this day. And I was going to heal this guy. And he's going to give glory to God and be saved. And God might know something we don't know. This man may never have received Christ if he wasn't blind. A lot of people who are going to get saved might not have got saved if he wasn't blind. This man might not have been happy. But once he was, could see, he appreciated his sight. He was a happy man the rest of his life. Where God knew he's going to be a grump and a discontent and not realize how good it is. And by the way, every once in a while, you might want to close your eyes and live for about 10 minutes without sight. And just you'll start saying, man, I'm so glad I can see. About the third time you stub your toe. And you'll say, man, vision's a good thing. Because a lot of times we don't appreciate good things. And vision's a wonderful thing. If you didn't have vision, you couldn't see me right now. That's a wonderful thing for you. And, 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 and there's so many good things about vision. And this man was healed. And you know, when somebody can't walk and can walk, and when somebody's blind and, can see, and then they can see, boy, they're happy people. It was for the glory of God, it says. Neither at this man's sin nor his parents. They're fine. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works. This is, this, is, this is something that sometimes people get messed up thinking that somebody has to be blamed. What joy for this man and his family that they had afterward. It gave others hope that they could have a bright future. It pointed them to Jesus and gave glory to God and showed that God does amazing things and that God cares about people and doesn't abandon them and that God has blessings and, and, and it gave glory to God and say what an amazing God and what a great savior this man's blindness and suffering and he was blind from birth until he was an adult at least uh, we don't know how old he was but at least when he was 18 20 years old at the minimum and this man was blind but it was for a good thing and it changed this man's life and sometimes bad things happen for good reasons. And please don't let the devil tell you if something bad happened, you must be bad. I'll just tell you this, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Sometimes bad things happen because you deserve it. But God is a good father and a good parent always tells their child while they're spanking them. And when God has disciplined me, I always know exactly why that happened. God says, you should have been doing this. God tells me and tells me and tells me, and then he punishes me. And then as soon as he punishes me, and instantly, I know why this happened. It's not, I wonder if. It's not, the, the, my father tells me exactly why he's punishing me. Because he's a loving father, and he wants to chasten me and return me to him and fix me. But a lot of times, I mean, there's a lot of th reasons that bad things happen. But sometimes it's for a good thing. And God's going to use it. And God can use things in a great way. And so don't, don't let the devil lie to you that, uh, that, 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 good, that bad things can't happen for a good reason. Next, God usually makes us do our part. 
Chapter 9, verse 6, it says, When he thus spoke, and he spat on the ground, and made clay with the spittle, and he anointed the, man's, uh, the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of uh, Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seen. I love this truth. God's been speaking this so much about me and I, I, to me about this, and I've, I've, I've taught this. I was teaching in the Philippines also. It's an amazing thing. As Jesus could have said, receive your sight, and he'd have been healed. But he didn't. Jesus went. He took some clay, spit on it, and then he took it, and he put it over his eyes and covered his eyes, and he says, now, go to the pool of Siloam and wash in the pool, and you'll receive your sight. And I love it. He went and did that in the phrase that he came seen. The thing that you notice there that's very important is Jesus made him do something. Isn't that interesting? Uh, the same thing is true in uh, Luke chapter 17 and verse 14. It says he told the lepers, he says, they had leprosy, and he said, hey, go show yourself to the priests, and you'll be healed. And it said, and as they went, they were healed. God usually makes us do our part. If a man won't work, neither should he eat. I want you to understand that God has all the power to do the miracle, but God does not do miracles for lazy people. Look, uh, God might speak during the message this morning, but I still have to study. I know you may not think I did. <laughs> but I have to do my part. God blesses when we do our part, but God's not a welfare God. God is a God who says, you do your part. If that's not enough, I'll do the rest. I want you to make an effort to do something. We do that in our assistance with people all the time. Uh, we, 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 do, we, we say, look, if they can do something, let's let them do something, and then we'll help them. Why? Because it's good for them to do their part. When people do not do their part, it's bad for them. It's bad for them. And, and I'll help my kids if they have to do a job that's too hard for them to do, but I want them to try to do their part. And that's always what God wants you to do. And do not think if you do nothing, God's going to bless you. Don't think if you do nothing, it's going to work out. When you, uh, you say, I want to be spiritual. Okay, read your Bible, pray, and go to church. I don't want to. Okay, you're not going to be spiritual. I want, I want my bills paid. Okay, go work. But I won't make enough, but, but you'll do your part. You're trying. I want you to do your part. It's good for you because human nature is such that when someone does everything for us, we tend to say, all right, yeah, this is awesome, which is really bad for us. If a man won't work, neither should he eat. But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, God will save the souls, but we got to go talk to him. God will speak to your heart, but you got to read the Bible. God will answer your prayers, but you got to pray. That's, that's the way God designed it. He says, go wash yourself in the pool. I'm going to heal you. All you got to do is go wash your eyes out, but go, go find your way. But he's blind. He can't see. He'll find a way. It's not that hard. And, and if he wants his sight, he'll go do it. If he doesn't want to, if he's too lazy for that, then... He won't get healed. <laughs> that sounds mean to our society. Our society has gotten so soft that we, if we, if anybody is demanded of any anything, and, and and please look, don't accuse this church or me of being mean and not helping people. <laughs> look, we let a homeless person here at ten o'clock at night last night to give him food. Okay, we help people, but you know what? Not if they won't try. Not if they won't try. Not if they won't do something. Not if they won't do their part. And Jesus says, yeah, here, put something on your eye. Go wash yourself in this pool and follow instructions. Often God, does, uh, God makes us do our part. And the lepers were healed as they went. As they went. Look, God's been good, and he's done so many amazing things, and we don't deserve all those things. But all those things that God has done, almost every single one of them, there was a whole bunch of sweat involved and a whole bunch of labor 
And we're amazed at what our labor produced and what God blessed and how God's done amazing things. Uh, 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 listen, I, I've been amazed and stunned, but we had to do our part. How many of you in this room had, did I have to visit and knock on your door and witness to you and check on you and you messed up and, 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 and visit you and, and help you out and visit you in jail or whatever you're doing at a particular time and help you? You know what? You're here and it's a miracle and God's done an amazing work. But look, I just want to know that it took somebody's effort. And if you want to see God work, you're going to have to put forth the effort to help people, to get your own provision, I've just never seen God bless lazy people. He'll be merciful for a minute, but eventually he says, all right, I've helped you out. Get back on your feet and do your thing. You've got to make some choices. And please get that. Often God does, God, God makes us do our part. Go. Why did he do that? Why didn't he just heal him on the spot? I don't know. But he could have. And he says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. It's great. And he did that. Next, often God does something before you see him. This is a point I just want to think about a little bit and use our heads. And uh, chapter 9, verse 12, it says, uh, he came seeing. And verse 12, it says, then said they unto him, where is he? And he said, I know not. <laughs> Here's what happened. Jesus comes to the guy, anoints his eyes. The guy take, goes down and washes the pool. He comes back. He's seeing everything. Wow, he can see. And then he goes, where is that guy? And Jesus took off. <clears throat> he didn't know what Jesus looked like. And, and the Pharisee said, where is he? And he says, I don't know. Who was he? I don't know. Who do you think he was? I think he must have been a prophet or something. And he doesn't even know who he is. Jesus already did the work in his life, but he never saw Jesus. And I want to say that's oftentimes what happens in, in almost every one of our lives is Jesus came and visited you and helped you and you didn't even know it was Jesus. Later on, he's going to see Jesus and know who he is and what he looks like. But you were at a point in your life where you should have died. You were at a point in your life where God spoke to you. God sent someone along your path. You were in big trouble and God sent someone to you. And you didn't even know who Jesus was, but Jesus actually came to you and helped you. He's going to get to know you later. He's a very humble God who doesn't need you to immediately see and give him all the glory. He, you might have been uh, just a kid, and he might have sent someone along your path, and you didn't even know what a Christian was at the time. But God came and visited you before you ever knew who he was. You didn't even see him. Later, when you understood God and knew the knowledge of God and learned the Bible, you look back and said, that was God. I didn't even know who God was. That person came and brought me that message. That person talked to me. That person saved me. That person, that, that, that thing happened. You don't even know if it was an angel that came. You don't know why you thought that. You don't know why you ended up in that place, why you lived there. You didn't know that. I, I ended up, I needed to be, I was so messed up and specific in, in my needs. I needed to be in a certain church with a certain pastor. That's what I needed to be in. But I was in Boise, in that church was going to be in Oregon City. And that winter, God sent a brutal winter in Boise. And it was sub-zero. Cars weren't starting. It was just, a, and Boise gets bad winters, but it was a bad winter. I think it was 1975, maybe, somewhere in that, that range. Terrible winter. And then the summer came around, and it was a terrible hot summer. Brutal. Way too hot. And my mom finally said, I am leaving this state. I cannot handle this hot and cold. Where is it mild? Oh, Oregon's not too far away. Let me apply for some jobs there. And she landed a job as a 911 dispatcher in Oregon City. And then she said, I got to buy a house. I got to find a house. And she found a house. And that house was on the other side of a field from that church it was going to start. And you know what? That pastor came from the south and came, came there, and it was a perfect pastor for me, coming from Arkansas, foreign country, and, uh, and, and, and coming all the way there. And why was it such a terrible winter and terrible summer? Because God said, I got to get that guy saved. And why did that, out of all the places, why Oregon City? Because that church was coming. 
And, and, and God is, is omnipotent and he's, he's omniscient. He knows everything. And he has a plan and, 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 and he will come. And look, I know multiple times in my life I should have died. But I wasn't saved yet. And God said, I, I'm going to keep you alive. I'm going to keep you alive till you can come to know me. I'm going to send some friends along. I'm going to send some people in your life that you'll need or you're really going to be in trouble. And just people who kept me from getting in too bad of trouble and too bad of circumstances. See, Jesus visits you before you even know who he is or what he looks like. You'll meet him later and you know, you'll know it was him. How many of you know it was him back then now, but you didn't know it then? See, Jesus visited you when you couldn't even see him because he's such a kind God. He's such a kind God. And this man didn't even know what Jesus looked like. He just said, he healed me. Hope I get to meet him someday. Next, he, met, he found him at Jesus later. Look at verse 35. Uh, you go forward. <clears throat> verse 35, Jesus heard they had cast him out. They, 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 they rejected the guy because he didn't, he didn't criticize Jesus, even though he didn't know who he was. In verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said to him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. That talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. He saw him. He met him. And he believed on him. He got to see him later. Jesus found him later. <laughs> and that's what Jesus did to you and I. He found you later. He said, that was me back then. Maybe today you just realize it. Maybe before you already realize it. But, you know, I, I think uh, 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 just, just, just stories I've heard of Christians. Uh, Brother Chris, you told me a story about how all the things you had done wrong before you were a Christian, uh, before you were serving the Lord. And, and if he would have been caught for all those things, he couldn't travel like he travels around the world to do God's work. God kept him so he could not have the criminal record. And, 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 we, we, we just, God just, God knows what's going to happen and he, he meets us. We meet him later. We understand it later when we give him the glory later. And this man met Jesus. Next, he confessed Jesus as Lord. Look at verse 35. Uh, let's go forward to verse. He says, that, do you believe on the son of God? See, the whole issue is who Jesus is. I want you to understand they asked him earlier uh, what, uh, who that he thought he was. And, and they ask about that. And, and said, who, who did you think he was? But if you look back uh, uh, earlier in the chapter, in chapter 9, <clears throat> he says, uh, uh, let me find the verse here, uh, verse 17, they said unto him, the blind man, what sayest thou of him that hath opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. And Jews said, he's a, he's a sinner, he can't be a prophet. But now he says something much more than a prophet. He said, do you believe in the Son of God? That's a lot different than a prophet. And he says, who is he? And he says, me. I'm the one who healed you. And he says, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Jesus said to him, thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. If Jesus is not God, he would not accept the worship, by the way. If you worship me, I'm going to be picking you up really quick, like any human should. Jesus accepted the worship because the first and second commandment said you only worship God. Jesus accepted worship, proving he's God. And he worshiped Jesus. He said, I believe in you, Lord. You're the son of God. And boom, he was saved. But he confessed it with his mouth. And one of the things, uh, traditionally in America, what we do is we do a sinner's prayer, and that's fine, and that's good. And, and I believe in the, 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 the publican in Luke 18. He prayed a sinner's prayer, and God be merciful to me, a sinner. And I think that's fine, and, and it's good. But often in the Bible, another way to accept Christ was to confess with your mouth that he is Lord. And that's exactly what this guy did. He said, I believe. Lord, I believed. And he worshiped him. Romans 10, 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can confess who you believe Jesus is because that's believing on him. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe Jesus is the Lord who rose again from the dead. I believe Jesus is the Messiah, the King of Kings. And you confess to your mouth publicly who you believe Jesus is. And, and this man did that, and he publicly confessed that. There's many, many, many verses. Uh, uh, Jesus asked the disciples in Matthew 16, verse 15, 16, 17, whom do you say that I am? And he said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. 
And he says, flesh and blood hath not revealed the Son to you, but your Father in heaven. And he confessed who Jesus was. And he says, you know what? You've moved to a new level. I give you the keys, the keys to the kingdom. You're saved. Because you confess who Jesus is. You know, I think it's something that everybody should do. You do it naturally by witnessing. But I think if you've never confessed that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you believe that he is the Messiah, or you believe that he is God in the flesh, you believe that he rose from the dead, basically it's what he did here. Confess to your mouth the Lord Jesus. When you say he is Lord, you're saying he's not just a man. He is what the Bible said he was and what he claimed to be, the Son of God. He's the Lord. Can we do that today? Can you just look at someone next to you and say, I believe Jesus is Lord? Can you confess that? Do that right now. Look at somebody and confess that. I think that's a good thing to do. I think that's a good thing to do. And we see that they confess that Jesus is Lord. And, and, and we see that. Look at John 11, where we're nearby. John 11. Jesus is Lord. He's not just a man. He's a Son of God. John 11, verse 27. And she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God, that you come into the world. It's common in the Bible. And by the way, it is not just a prophet. It is not just enough to believe that Jesus is a prophet as the Muslims and Buddhists do. He is the Son of God. He is the Lord. And that separates everything. There's a lot of good prophets. And Jesus, yes, he was a prophet. And he foretold the future. But the man started off saying, I think he's a prophet. And then he came back and said, I believe you're the Lord. And that's salvation. Amen. And he accepted that and he let the man worship him. Saying, yes, I'm God in the flesh. That's how I've come. And that's what I am. We said a bunch of things. We said, don't pass by people in the need. Sometimes things, uh, bad things happen for good reasons. Uh, God usually makes us do our part. We said often God does something before, uh, God does something before you ever see him. He confessed that Jesus is Lord. There is more than one type of blindness. There is more than one type of blindness. Let's go to, back to John 9 and look at verse uh, 39. Or you can listen along as I read again. You don't have to turn to every verse. I'm going to read them all out loud. But John chapter 9 and verse 39, it says, Jesus said, For judgment I come into the world, that they which see might not see, that they which, uh, and that they which see might be made blind. Let me read that again. For judgment I come into the world, that they which see might not see, and they which uh, see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which... Uh, were with him, heard these words, and said to them, Are we blind also? And Jesus said, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. See, Jesus used the opportunity of a blind man in, in vision to teach about seeing and blindness because spiritual blindness is all over the Bible. And I won't have time to take you all over the Bible because there's so many verses about how it's a, it's a real picture of spiritual blindness. But our memory verse that you're going to memorize in Acts 28, 26, we can turn there, 26 and verse 18. Uh, that verse there, Acts 26, 18, we're just going to give you a few verses on blindness, spiritual blindness. And you know what? I have been spiritually blind. And it is amazing what you can't see. And you might be listening to me and be spiritually blind today, but there is more than one type of blindness. There's physical blindness and what a tragedy, but there's also spiritual blindness. And, uh, and Acts and uh, chapter 26 and verse 18, it says, To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in Christ. Our job is to turn them from blindness and from darkness because Satan has blinded their minds. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians in chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 3 through 6 and show you more spiritual blindness. And there's a lot of verses. It says this, it says, uh, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, there it is again, Satan blinded us, had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and our, ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The devil blinded their minds, and we're supposed to bring the light of them because they're spiritually blind. I think of Matthew 5, verse 14 through 16. You're the light of the world. A city that is set in a hill cannot be hid. 
Neither do men light a, a candle and put it in a bushel, but put it on a candlestick and to give it light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Look, the world is in darkness and blind or spiritually blind, and you're in my job is to bring them the light and open their eyes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look, I was spiritually blind. I thought I'd get to heaven by my good works. I thought I could be good enough. I couldn't even see how bad I was. I was so blind. I thought I was a good person. I was a rotten kid. <laughs> but I was blind. I thought I could, I could be good enough, but I did not understand. God is holy and no sin can enter into heaven. I was spiritually blind. I knew nothing about God. Someone came and told me and opened my eyes, and I said, whoa, I'm a sinner. I can't go to heaven by my good works. Wow, I'm lost. I need Jesus. And I saw that Jesus was the way to heaven. I accepted him. And then my eyes were open to salvation, and then my eyes started getting open to the word of God. But smart people think they're never blind. And so many smart people in the world are blind, and they're even blinded by religion. Because the religion is telling them that the religion is the way to God. And the religion can say to them, no, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But they're spiritually blind and they go to church every Sunday. And you say, you're going to heaven. Yeah, I'm a good person. No, I was baptized. I was confirmed. No, that's not going to save you. The devil's blinded your eyes. Why did Jesus die if you were going to get to heaven by the church? That's a lot of suffering for no reason. He died because no, there's none righteous. No, not one. But there's spiritual blindness. Look, can I just tell you this? I used to believe in evolution. I was spiritually blind. When you get, I've seen so many people, smart people, people with degrees in our church, and they were they, they believed all of it, and all of a sudden, we kind of open their eyes to, to, to God and the Bible and evolution, and it's like they go, what was I thinking? First there was nothing. Then there was something. Zero times zero equals one. And then that something was everything in the entire universe in one little ball. And by the way, that's changed, the size of that ball has changed in my lifetime so many times. When I was a kid, it was one big, huge mass in space. And it was just a huge thing. and exploded. Uh, they found out there's no way to be enough power for the things to scatter out that as big as the universe is. So they compressed it. And my whole life, I watched them compress it, compress it, compress it, compress it. Now it's smaller than an atom. By the way, try to do that. Try to compress a gallon of water into something smaller than an atom, let alone every bit of matter in the universe. <clears throat> and then it exploded. And when it exploded, this nothing became something, then it exploded. It became all these wonderful planets. Can I tell you? I was a kid, and we loved to take M80s and blow things up. And when I blew things up, they did not become orderly. <clears throat> but the universe is ordered, and it made this little thing. Uh, it made a little ball of fire in the middle, and then it made this planet go around that ball of fire and go in circles. And around that little ball, it made a little, another little ball go in circles called a moon. And all the gravity keeps it floating in circles perfectly around this big ball of fire, the exact right distance. And then, and then the little moon goes around and keeps it tied just right. And the magnetism never pulls the moon into the sun. It never pulls it into there. It never goes flying in space. It all just keeps on going around perfectly just by an explosion. It's awesome. Cool explosion. <clears throat> and then in the middle of... Uh, uh, a bunch of uh, water eventually formed the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the 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 oxygen and the and the hydrogen came together just right <clears throat> and then in the little puddle there thousands and thousands of proteins just happened to come together and connect to each other <laughs> thousands of them and in that digital code of DNA that actually did little pieces just came together, which actually if they're in water, they would actually separate naturally, but they came together this time and they stuck together in a perfect order that, that was an exact, complicated, unbelievable thousands of things in a digital order. And they all came together in the exact same spot and they stuck together. And in that code, it had inside of itself to reproduce because it didn't have it in the digital code to reproduce. It didn't reproduce, but it still wasn't alive. So in order to come alive, what happened is lightning hit that spot and it jolted it to life. Most of the time, lightning doesn't bring things to life, but in this case it did. And, 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 and that suddenly became alive and it had to reproduce in there. And that little creature says, I want to make more of me. And he reproduced. 
And you start looking through that and you look at DNA information disappears, doesn't increase in complexity. And mutations, the little guy mutated and mutated again and mutated again. And the more you find about DNA, the more ridiculous this becomes because DNA is so incredibly complex. But uh, uh, the, uh, he mutated and, 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 and the mutations were good, even though mutations are bad. Check Chernobyl. The people, they, they, because of the radiation, people's DNA was mutated and they had babies. And the babies were deformed because mutations are almost always bad. But in these cases, for trillions of times, the mutations are always good. And that little critter became the redwood tree and it became an ant and it became a blue whale and it became you and me. All from that explosion where there was nothing before. And it all happened by accident. Every little thing there. And you just kind of say, what was I thinking? Because every single thing it has told you is scientifically impossible. <laughs> scientifically. But when you want to believe a lie and when all you've been told is one thing, and I believed it, that's all I was told. That's what I was taught in public school my whole life. And I started questioning, I said, and now we know DNA, and DNA just destroyed evolution. It's decreasing, information is decreasing, not increasing. Okay, and, 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 and you say, no, oh. if that end of that happened, it was somebody was guiding it. If it happened that way, which it didn't, somebody was guiding it. But Ren, and, and you realize people are blind. But that's why we're here to bring the light. There's more than one type of blindness. You cannot see your sin. I've talked to so many people who are in blindness. I talked to one guy who's just nasty to women, nasty to women, nasty to women, and, 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 and had terrible relationships with women. And, and I remember him talking to me about this and how he was in an abusive relationship right then, and the girl was trying to just save her life. And, and I'm talking to the guy. He said, man, these women are all messed up. I said, do you not see? You've been to jail multiple times for hurting women. Do you not see it could possibly be you? No, man, it's their fault. <laughs> and they're blind. Because you can be blind to your own sin because you want to justify yourself. And you can be blind that you're doing wrong because you want to blame somebody else. And you can say it's a mom's fault, it's a pastor's fault, it's the church's fault, it's my... No, 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 if you do wrong, it's your fault. Don't blind yourself. You're making a choice. Don't blind yourself. Don't be blind. You have eyes and you can see. That's great. But don't in the spiritual realm. There's more than one type of blindness. Sometimes the devil has blinded you in all kinds of terrible ways. He told you God does not love you and God does not accept you. And you're blinded by Satan that God does not love you and the, for God so loved the world. When nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, but the devil's told you God does not love you and you believe it. Because you've been blinded by Satan because somebody else was mean to you and said bad things about you. And you projected onto God what you had from your parents because they hated you and didn't treat you right. But understand, God loves you. You're being blinded by Satan. There's more than one type of blindness. And you cannot see how much God loves you and God screams it. But you've been blinded by Satan and his lies. And the devil's used life and some things to blind you. Devil's blind some of you and said you will never have hope or victory in your life. You'll always be defeated and you are blind to understand the great power of God that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You've been blinded by religion and good works can save you. You've been blinded that you do not need God in your life. But every breath you breathe is because of God. Yes, you, you've had success, and yes, God's helped you, and God put you in good circumstances. But understand, God can humble you real quick when you think you don't need him. And you will have those skills removed. Do not be blind that you need God. Without him, you can do nothing. He's giving you the air to breathe. He's making your mind work. He's making your heart beat. He's put you in a rich nation and giving you good opportunities and maybe giving you a good family to trade you, train you up or something. But you need God. Do not be blinded that you can do it on your own. You need God. We even do that in our spiritual life, and we think we're strong enough, and we forget the devil blinds us how much we need God every hour. we got to see our blindness. You must see your blindness back in John chapter 9 <clears throat> to finish up here. There's a lot of story, lessons from this story. 
But you got to see your blindness. In verse 41, Jesus, the Pharisees are coming to him saying, oh, are we blind? Come on. We're religious leaders. And Jesus, verse 41, the last verse of John 9, and Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. He said, look, you think you're fine. That shows you're blind. And you still have your sin because you are spiritually blind. Last thing I want to say is, no matter what, what anyone thinks, you know that the Lord has done something in your life. Verse 24 and 25. They came to him and read these as text. Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. And then they called the, the, they, the man that was blind and said to him, Give God praise, for we know this man is a sinner. We know it. And he answered, said unto him, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But one thing I know, whereas I was blind, and now I see. <laughs> I want to say this. No matter what the world tells you or what the devil tells you, no matter what, you know God has done something in your life. Yeah. I think of First John, and it says over and over, Look, hereby know we that he is in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Look, I, I, the Bible, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God tells me all kinds of amazing things. And I, just what we learned in Sunday school this morning about the future of, of Israel and their attacks and what God has done. We can see the Bible's true and God's real, all that stuff. But you know what? I would know it anyway because of what God's done in my life. You can tell me there's no God. I know him. I know him. What do you mean there's no? I know him. I've seen him in my life. I've seen what he's done in his life. He speaks to me regularly. And, and, you can, and somebody can tell us whatever we want. I once was blind, but now I see. You guys can say whatever you want about the guy. Hey, woo I see. <laughs> I can see. That's so wonderful. <clears throat> we were blind, but now we see. We sang that. We'll sing it again in a minute. But I just want to say there's some good lessons for us here. And let's, let's, let's go out and help some people in the darkness. Let's make sure we give God the glory. Let's make sure we don't let the devil blind us. And don't listen to the devil's blinding lies. And when Jesus met you, and in the end, all this is about, when Jesus met you and what he did for you and how he helped you and saved you and took care of you, and you know the mess you were in and how God's kind of put you in a good place, in the end, you know what it was? He glorified God. And that's what you and I need to do is glorify God for what he's done. Let's go ahead and bow for prayer together. Father, we thank you for the chance to preach the word of God. We thank you for this story of this man, just a blind guy sitting there, and pretty soon he's being attacked by the Pharisees, and yet in the end he just says, hey, I was blind and now I see. And then he confesses Jesus Christ as Lord. And Lord, we see the, the, all the scales are removed from his eyes, not just, the, not just the physical ones, but the spiritual ones, and he could see. I pray we'd give you glory today. I pray we'd not pass by people. I pray we'd go and, and give you the praise you deserve. I pray that we would go and confess you proudly as Lord. And Lord, I just pray that if we're walking in darkness, the devil's blinded our eyes, may we open our eyes and see the truth. Thank you for the word of God today, Lord. I pray that you would speak in a great